This week on Intrigued Full Effect. Now, Imani was in a, a same-sex relationship with one of the three perpetrators. And he knew all three of these individuals. He knew them well. They all knew one another. So these were not strangers who were violently assaulting Imani. I'm Shandrea Thomas, and welcome to episode 58. In this podcast, I talk about curious cases, disappearances, and other stuff. And today I'm talking about the disappearance and death of 27-year-old Armani Morgan from Dallas, Texas. According to police, Armani vanished on June 3rd of 2017 and was quickly reported missing by family members who couldn't reach him later that day. Then, seven weeks later, his remains were found on July 24th at the 2900 block of Wilhurt Avenue near a grassy wooded area, less than one mile from his home. Investigators say Armani was known to spend time in that area. I spoke to Armani's aunt, Robin Johnson, who says Armani was attacked, shot at, and stalked in the weeks and days leading up to his disappearance by three people, two men and a woman. According to Robin, one male was killed in 2019, the other is in prison, and the female is out on the street. She refers to them as perpetrators throughout the podcast, and of course, I'm not naming anyone because no one has been officially charged in Armani's death. I reached out to Dallas police and had a deep conversation with Robin about the case. This is what happened. For people who may not be familiar with Armani's story, uh, so tell me what happened to your nephew, and when did you find out that, that there was something really wrong going on? Uh, well, my youngest daughter, uh, who is a year older than Armani, uh, they uh, had a close bond. They were more like sister and brother versus first cousin. And once she didn't hear from him uh, on June the 3rd, uh, she knew something was wrong because they, they spoke to each other every day. You know, what, what's interesting is that because I was looking kind of researching it and going through information about this case. There's a lot of stuff in layers to what's going on with it. Mm -hmm. But but essentially, let's just kind of start from the beginning for those who may not know um, Armani's full story. And just, mm -hmm. just to be clear so people understand, first off, let me say this. Let's get to the stuff that um, everything that led to his disappearance, because people, you know, Armani, Armani was gay. But yes. people, there's some confusion about transgender versus he just liked to, you know, wear women's clothing here and there. Right. That's correct. And that was the label. Um, that's the presumption that law enforcement and other um, uh, news article outlets, say, for instance, like uh, Channel uh, Channel 8 News and uh, uh, Dallas Morning News, which was one of the major newspaper uh, sources here uh, in Dallas, Texas. They didn't reach out to me, nor Armani's mom, nor my daughter, because my daughter was the one that... Um, uh, reported him missing. So if you if if you didn't want to check with my daughter who reported him missing, you didn't want to try to contact his mother to get an accurate story. You didn't want to contact me to get an accurate story because myself and my youngest daughter have always been the individuals who have spoken with uh, law enforcement and gone to the police department. So mm -hmm. the fact that they didn't reach out to any of us to get the true facts about. Uh, his, you know, whether he identified as gay and versus them assuming that he was transgender because uh, he, he was known to wear female clothing, uh, you know, quite often. You know, he would sometimes dress as a male in the daytime and dress as a female at night, mm -hmm. you know, and, and interchange it. So it wasn't just him constantly wearing women clothing all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, let's, let's backtrack really quick. So let's backtrack to the date of June third 2017 you get a phone call from your daughter saying something is wrong i haven't heard from armani but we need to call the police or what happened there she actually had searched for our money several days prior to her um contact and you know letting it uh let me know should i say because she did uh let armani's mom know okay i hadn't heard from him have you heard from him but my daughter actually tried to look for him on her own prior to reaching out to law enforcement and even to me. But prior to that, she had uh, asked Armani's mom, have you heard from him today? And uh, she said no, because Armani's mom works in the home health field. Um, she does home health for uh, seniors. And uh, But leading up to that, 
uh, Armani had been violently assaulted by three uh, different perpetrators leading up to June the 3rd. Mm -hmm. And um, one particular perpetrator um, sought him out, hunted him down like an animal on three different occasions to, to violently assault him with the intent to cause him physical harm. And this particular person and one of the other uh, two perpetrators, or the two of the three perpetrators, uh, violently assaulted our money on June the 3rd. And after that, he was never seen alive again. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what we need to get into is kind of like the timeline of events leading up to Armani's disappearance. So, okay, let's establish what's happening here. So leading up to his June 3rd disappearance in 2017, what do you guys know about the days leading up to that? What occurred? Starting the week of uh, May the 22nd of uh, 2017 is when um, one of the three perpetrators uh, began to um, search him out, hunt him down to uh, intentionally cause him physical harm. Now, Armani was in a, a same-sex relationship with one of the three perpetrators. And he knew all three of these individuals. He knew them well. They all knew one another. So these were not strangers who were violently assaulting our money. Um, the, there was a female and two males. Here's a breakdown of the timeline of events. According to Robin, on May 22nd of 2017, Armani was attacked. Then the next week on May 30th, that same person allegedly placed harassing calls to Armani to lure him out of his home. Then on May 31st, Robin says that Armani was shot at inside of his apartment and attacked at his front door. She also says the incident was captured on video, posted on Facebook, and given to police. Three days later, on June 3rd of 2017, Armani was assaulted again and vanished. Then, on July 24th, seven weeks later, his skeletal remains were found in the road on a residential street, and the remains were so decomposed, a cause of death was never fully determined. Each one of the assaults against him by this particular perpetrator, she always had somebody aiding her in violently assaulting Armani. The week of May 22nd, they tracked our money down um, at this uh, strip mall that had a smoke shop, a barbecue uh, place, and they cornered him there, and all three of them violently assaulted him that day. And um, then several weeks later, uh, on May the 30th, she continued to, uh, well, she started placing harassing phone calls to our money's home phone, trying to get him to come out lure him outside of his home. He wouldn't take the bait. So all of a sudden, a gun bullet pierces through Armani's uh, and his mother's living room window, and they live on the second floor. And uh, so once the bullet pierced through the living room window, that's what caused Armani and his mom to go outside to ask them, the bystanders, did they uh, see who actually did the shooting? And none of the people stood out that were standing outside were willing to come forward because they were friends of this particular person that fired the, the bullet into the to the window. Now, mind you, according to the uh, apartment complex leasing manager, the security uh, surveillance cameras right outside our money and his mother's unit supposedly were inoperable that day. So it didn't actually capture the image of the person that actually did the shooting. Mm. But for this person to make phone calls the day before, violently assault him several weeks before that, make harassing phone calls the same day, minutes before the bullet enters into the apartment, then as soon as our money steps outside of his home, there this person is to violently assault him. There's a couple of questions that come to mind, and I'm sure it'll be the questions of people who are listening to this right now. Mm -hmm. Number one, so would you believe to be the cause for his disappearance would be his connection to these people? Okay, so that's number one. Number yeah. two, my question is, what's the problem? What is the root cause of why these people want to would want to attack Armani? So why were they after him, is my question. The female perpetrator... Uh stated to law enforcement, to Dallas police, that her altercations with Armani stemmed from, she said Armani stole 
money from her uh, government food stamp card uh, is what caused them to to be into it with one another. But at first she said our money stole uh, $400 from her. And to say that he stole $400 from you, then did he steal $400 in cash? She didn't say it, whether it was cash or not. But as she was questioned, it, it was, uh, she stated that our money stole $400 worth of food stamps from her uh, monthly food stamp card. So as she continued to be questioned um, by different uh, detectives within the Dallas Police Department, um, one pressed her and said, well, how could he steal from your uh, personal debit, food debit card if there is a four digit personal pin that only you should have access to? And at that point, she had to admit, OK, well, I gave him the pin number, but he still stole the stole the money from my car. She said, well, no. She said if he stole from the car, then he would have um, committed this act without your knowledge. The whole thing it was that she would solicit her money's help to sell her food stamps every month in exchange for cash to buy drugs because that's what they did together. Oh. So when when okay. that situation went bad between the two of them is when she began to hunt him down to, to violently assault him. Now, what went wrong with that scenario? None of us will never know um, because it was a thing that they did together more than two and a half, three years. She mm -hmm. would solicit his help every month to sell her food stamps in exchange for cash for them to purchase drugs. OK, so so let's let's just get, get this cleared out really quick then. So if, if Armani was involved with this, it's safe to assume that he was used, he was a drug user with this lady. I'll was going on there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll okay. Go. Just so people understand that, that that is the, the, the situation and the relationship they had. And it yeah. would seem to me that $400, I mean, I know $400, it depends on how you measure it as, you know, as yourself, but that seems to be not enough to want to, you know, take someone out. That's why I'm, you know, was there more than that going on there? Especially considering the fact that there was supposedly a relationship within this family, right? So, and that's 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 what she was telling um, the people around her the reason that she was violently assaulting him and and searching him out, you know, seeking him out, hunting him like an animal. This is this the story that comes from her as to the reason why she was so angry with him and wanted to fight him all the time every time she saw him or hunted him down to do it. And uh, with Armani's same-sex partner, Armani no longer wanted to be in the same-sex relationship with him anymore. And that caused him to start violently assaulting Armani because Armani uh, no longer wanted to be in this relationship with him anymore. I reached out to Dallas police to get an update on the case and suspects, and it took a while to hear back. But I did get a response from their public information officer, Jesse Carr, and I'm told that the case is still under investigation. And that's pretty much all they had to say. The second of the three perpetrators aided this female in violently assaulting our money. Um, now, this second person, he was a low-level drug dealer in the community. Armani's same-sex partner was a low-level drug dealer in the community. So when they would, when Armani and this female would sell the food stamps in exchange for cash, these two low-level drug dealers would be the ones that they would purchase the drugs from. I want you to tell me about where these individuals are now, because from what I understand, one of them is no longer alive. One is in jail and one is not in jail, right? That's correct. The female is not in, in jail, has never been arrested. The Second of the three perpetrators, uh, one of the low-level drug dealers, uh, was shot and killed in November of 2019 while committing additional crimes in and around Dallas. Okay. And Armani's same-sex partner has been uh, remanded to state prison uh, since uh, December of uh, 2017. Okay. Now, and this is a question I'm sure people would ask. What makes you believe it's them? Could it have been some someone else who Armani had issues with that could have been responsible for this? Why, aside from the people and the obvious, you know, the past things leading up to this date, but maybe was with could there have been someone else, you know, that in the picture that you guys may not be aware of who may have been involved with his disappearance and his death? 
Well, we don't believe that. And the reason being is because the female perpetrator um, on the day of the shooting incident, May the 31st, uh, she went to her Facebook page and was bragging about the shooting. And um, since then, she has also um, stated to another person that knew her and Amani well, uh, claiming she was given specific details, you know, of, of what happened to him. And come to find out when his remains were uh, recovered, some of what she was saying is, is true. And, you know, since it's still an ongoing investigation, I really can't say exactly what it was that she said, but that signifies to us. And not only that, the fact that she hunted him down like an animal. She she sought him on three separate uh, occasions. She, she went out of her way to find him. And uh, on the day of the shooting incident, uh, you know, it's so ironic that once the phone call, harassing phone call stopped, that day, all of a sudden, she figured like, okay, I can't get him to come outside with these phone calls. All of a sudden, the bullet pierces through the living room window. That drew our money outside. And once that drew him outside, the brief cell phone video, one of the female perpetrator's friends sitting conveniently by to record it and then posted it on Facebook the same day. They were on the scene to see the fight, uh, the young man that was uh, killed in the female perpetrator, um, they were telling how this, the, the, the male that's deceased was actually holding our money down while the female was violently assaulting our money on um, June the 3rd because she couldn't handle our money by, by herself. Uh, although our money was tall and skinny, she's a... a a heavier person and and much bigger than our money, so she couldn't she couldn't handle him on her own. And um, they expressed that that particular day, our money had hit her and given her a black eye this day, and she did actually have a black eye uh, uh, when they were describing it. the The details of the the assault on June the third, okay. and uh, some of the people that lived in the apartment complex as well. Uh, were telling Armani's mom and my daughter uh, about the fight. So several people saw the fight. Oh, let me just double check this too. Um, mm -hmm. The pronouns, did he, was Armani referred to as he or was there a pronoun thing? Just to make sure that I'm, you know, appropriately referring to Armani the right way. You know, well, as far as his family always referred to him as he, even though he dressed in female clothing. Because uh, okay, just to make sure I have that cleared up, just yes. to, to be respectful of that, yes. right? It was June the third when he was reported missing, right? Yes. Okay. Then after that, um, what happens? What happens with the investigation? What happens with police? You know, where do things stand today? Uh, nothing happened when she reported him missing. Um, she she called um, Dallas police to report him missing. Uh, she was told during that phone call to contact Namus. So she contacted Namus to report him missing. Namus in turn tells her to contact uh, law enforcement to report him missing. So each entity, one tells her to call the other, the other tells her to call law enforcement. And so at this point, she begins looking for him on her own since she couldn't get any assistance from law enforcement, you know, or... Um, Namus told her to call law enforcement. Law enforcement tells her to call Namus. So she started searching for him on her own. Um, never heard from him, was never able to locate him. And um, the sad part about it is um, the day that Armani's remains were discovered, still didn't get the call from law enforcement once the purse was found. Armani had a purse. And once that purse was found, there was a female's phone number inside that purse. Now, my daughter's name is the same name of the uh, first name uh, that was on this piece of paper that was inside the purse. So um, one, the lead detective at that time um, placed a phone call to that phone number. And the young lady answered the phone. So he visited her the same day and uh, ask questions. The questions that he began to ask her immediately told her, you know, that they had found, you know, 
something belonging to him, the reason that they were contacting her because her phone number was in the purse. She had no idea that it was in the purse, but she she knew that for them to reach out to her, it had to be about our money. So at that point, he told he said, well, I can't uh, tell you anything uh, specific. We found this phone number in, in a purse uh, that we found. And uh, so at that point, this young lady reached out to her sister that knew and knows my youngest daughter and our mom, money's mom very well because this young lady lived in the same apartment complex. So she went to my sister's apartment and my youngest daughter was there. And she said, well, the detective just reached out to my sister asking her questions about her money. She said, in the fact, it had been seven weeks at that point, you know, uh, that he had been missing. And um, that's how we got the news about it. We, we didn't learn it from law enforcement. We, we learned it from people that knew our money. Wow. And so let me ask you this. How far away from where Armani lived were the remains, was the remains found? Like how, what was the distance between those two locations? It's less than five minutes from where he lives. So it's, it's, it's literally around the corner. Seven weeks went by. Okay. Almost yeah. two months went by. Yeah. And he, he was literally just in this space that, and I'm wondering like, were people just, people just walking by, driving by, didn't even, was it a wooded area? I'm just trying to figure out how no one it's Could actually it's, a vacant lot. It's in a dead end um, residential dead end. Mm. The the vacant lot is in a residential dead end. So that's where his remains were found. I know when I was looking through things, um, as far as the cause of death, that's still undetermined because they only they, they only have the skull and and the one bone. Uh, they six bones total. Hmm. Six bones total. So you, so you'll so never really know what the true cause of death was. In this case, then, huh? Right, because what uh, the ME's office said that um, the bones that they did recover uh, had no bullet wounds or striations or or anything on them um, to make a determine a definitive determination as to what may have happened. Uh, so let's get into the challenges that, that you've been facing, that your family has been facing with this case. I know you have a change.org petition on right now that has some signatures. You guys are pretty close to, to your goal in that. Um, let's kind of run through what you would like to see happen and, and where do you think things went wrong in this case? Where things went wrong, Armani's case was constantly pushed to the side at the expense of other cases. That's what went wrong. Bias and predetermined theory about our money because he was gay and black living in an impoverished neighborhood raised by a financially single, uh, financially challenged single parent, you know. Now, more than seven years after Armani's death, Robin says they launched a change.org petition to bring more attention to the case. They're asking that the Texas Rangers and Attorney General's office do a review of the case. They also want Dallas police to conduct forensic ballistics testing on the bullet fired into Armani's home on May 31st of 2017. On top of that, they want a new and expanded search of the crime scene where Armani was found for more evidence. And one one of the biggest things would be to change Armani's cause of death from undetermined to homicide. Armani's mom um, raised him as a single parent. You know, Armani was a latchkey kid and his mom has always worked, you know, uh, him growing up. And um, once he started hanging around uh, with certain uh, crowds, even in the sixth grade, you know, and by him being a latchkey kid and his mom being at work, uh, the people that he associated himself with, you know, he just decided he wanted to start trying to skip school and uh, do as he see other kids do that, you know, had single parents that really didn't care what they did and where they went, you know, but that wasn't the case with him. <laughs> you know, he had people that cared about him. And uh, I was always on him uh, once I got wind of him deciding he wanted to try to skip school. And I was like, no, <laughs> you know. And that that's just not going to happen. So I stayed on him. Um, he about middle school, um, maybe the eighth, going into the ninth grade. Um, he just decided he just didn't give up. Didn't want to go to school anymore. So at that point, you know, he had to be placed into um, this um, like alternative school or something like that. Yeah, it it was a, a program and that he had to stay at this facility. Uh, you know, to be forced to get, do his schoolwork, 
you know. And at some at one point, he he did tell my youngest daughter, "Well, I want to uh, come to stay with you guys." She said, "Well, you know how uh, my mama is, you know, uh, education. You're gonna have to go to school, you know, that because that's something she don't play about." So, you know, before that move-in date came, he changed his mind because he knew if you come and stay with me, it, you're going to have to go to school. You don't play. You don't play. No. I got you on that. You do not play. I got you on that. So let me ask you this. So tell me um, about Armani for people who may not know about personality-wise, right? So mm -hmm. tell me about what Armani was like and, um, you know, and all that type of thing. So people get a perspective of him as a person. Right. Always the life of the party. Uh, he can walk into the room. If if anybody is having a bad day or has had a bad day, when he walk into the room, he just he just wanted everybody to always keep a smile on their face. That laughing, dancing, you know, uh, he just always wanted everybody around him to be happy. He was an only child, you know. So anytime he was around family and who he thought were his friends, well, did Armani have like any type of, I know he had a struggle, you know, he had the substance use struggles, mm -hmm. um, but were there any life goals or any, any direction? You said he, he started doing hair. Is that pretty much where he was going with, with things at that yes. point? Hair and fashion is, is what, you know, his passion was. Okay. Um, and, and he was pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. He was pretty good at it. And, and I was hoping, you know, that that was a path that even though he decided he didn't want to sit in a school building, you know, I told him you can still, you know, get your GED and, and, and still pursue, you know, the hair. But as far as the impact on the family, um, how are you, you guys dealing with all of this? What has been the, the impact? It has to be agony not having closure in the case. It is. Um, to see uh, the grief on his mom's face every day is what, what drives me. It is what gets to me. Um, her son and only child, you know, it, 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 that's a pain that I can't even imagine. And I, I don't even try, you know, to imagine how she feels um, to no longer have him, you know, around. And um, the bittersweet part of it is my oldest daughter and Amani share the same birthday. So when, when, uh, December the 19th roll, rolls around, you know, we, we, we just don't know how to really enjoy the moment while we still grieving him and still need to celebrate my daughter, you know, because she's still here. That, that's something that we have to learn how to really get into and celebrate because it's not fair to her, you know, that we as a family can't celebrate her because we're still mourning, you know, the loss of our money. Yeah. But to see the grief on his mom's face every day is 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 a pain to me, you know, because it, it's something that um, she doesn't share, you know, how she really feels. But you can see it all over her face. Mm -hmm. You can see it all over her face. And that that's the painful part of it for me. What would you like to say to people who have been helping you? And what do you need right now? Uh, I need for uh, law enforcement to do their job to protect and serve. Our money's case hasn't been given the attention that it deserves. If his case is just given the attention that it deserves, a lot of things will be uncovered. You know, do what you took the oath to do. <laughs> you know, they do that. Basic 101 is going to uncover answers to, to his case. Just need that time and effort put into it. Just need that time and effort. And what I what I would ask anybody, um, the person and people who know something, please say something. That's that's we ask the public's help, and um, we will be eternally grateful. You know, because our money's mother and our family deserve those answers. And what will you continue to do at this point? I mean, there's no search that's needed. So because because, you know, you've had, you know, time to to figure all of that out with Armani. But is there anything else that you want people to know about your family, the situation altogether? Well, I'm still um, pursuing it, actively pursuing it. Um, there was a, a detective actually uh, reassigned to Armani's case in July of 2023. So he's actively taken up 
where the two previous um, detectives with the Dallas Police Department, where they failed because the things that I asked them to do, they told me, assured me they would do it, didn't do it. So now this detective is starting from scratch six years later. So he's behind the eight ball in even getting those basic things done. Armani's evidence in his case was never tested until this detective took over in July of 2023. Including the bullet? The, including the bullet and his clothing from the from the um from the crime scene. All right, well, Robin, thank you so much for talking with me today. And I'll definitely, you know, put this story together and do everything I can to get Armani's story out there. And if anything else comes up, you never know what people will say things on the internet. You did. There's a video posted on the internet right before, right? So That's true. you never know what information we'll get, you know, in this particular case. And if it happens, I'll be the first one to give you a call for sure. And I certainly appreciate that, you know, because uh, um, and one thing, too, I'm looking forward to going uh, to Congress next year. I'm, I'm going to Congress about his case next year. Most definitely. That's my main goal. All right. And that was the purpose, too, of the Change.org petition to get Congress and the state Senate's attention uh, regarding his case. There are no resources for families who are still seeking answers to cold cases. And that's unfortunate. It's extremely unfortunate. When it comes to my final thoughts about this case, it's pretty clear that Armani was having issues with people that he was associated with, and his aunt believes that they could be responsible for his disappearance. And remember the gunshots at Armani's home that happened around the same time of his disappearance? Robin also says that Armani was assaulted just days before he vanished, and while the family has closure of knowing where Armani is now, they do need to know who's responsible for his disappearance and his death, and they want justice for for their loved one. My number one question is, who would have a motive to hurt Armani? Well, Robin says that it has something to do with some missing money and some food stamps. At the end of the day, this is a tragic story and family members say, to this day, Armani's cause of death is still listed as undetermined. If you have any information in this case, call Special Investigations Detective Michael Yarrick at 216 Six seven one three six seven seven. If you have a case that you want me to check out, just visit me on the Intrigued Full Effect website or email me at intriguedfulleffect at hotmail.com. Until next time, be safe and stay true. The views, information, or opinions expressed during the Intrigued Full Effect, Curious Cases, Disappearances, and Other Stuff podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the host. The primary purpose of this podcast is to educate and inform. The host of this podcast assumes no liability or responsibility for any activities in connection with opinions shared in the podcast. The podcast and blog associated with it shall not be used in any legal capacity or as a basis for expert testimony. Any copyright material in the podcast is approved by the owner or as part of the public domain. Music by Pond5.